Well, happy Monday, um, CGR. So today's uh, activity is going to be around, I mean, we're kind of going through the basis of life on Earth, right? The, the resources that are going to get us going. We've, we've looked at the sun, which is the energy source for the Earth. We've looked at the atmosphere, which is the air that we breathe. And now we're going to look at another one of those essential components for life, which is fresh water. Again, you know, when you look at uh, um, some of the big uh, space goings on this year, it, it, it really revolves around the search for water. If you can find water in the universe, we can find life. And even if we can't find life, if we can find water, we can sustain the life that, that we want to have in those places. Places like Europa, uh, Mars, uh, even the moon looks like it might possess some water. It's really one of the essential and critical elements for life. So the search of the universe goes on, and the search on Earth itself is probably the most important thing. Lots of the wars of the 20th century, the Iraq War, the Iran War, uh, the Gulf Wars, really were fought about oil. Um, in fact, I would argue that Japan's entry into World War II was more about oil than anything, because most of the uh, places that they would get their oil from were lost when the uh, Allies uh, attacked Europe. Japan needed to get a partner, needed to find oil. Oil was the thing that really defined conflict in the 20th century. My argument would be that probably water is the next great resource that some of, the, some of that violence is going to take place around. You can live without oil. There's a, a, a world that we're evolving into that doesn't have oil. You can't live without water. Water is essential. So uh, we're going to do two things. One is kind of the opposite of what we did for the... Uh, um, for the uh, sun's energy budget, where we you know, took a reading and made a graphic organizer. Here, I give you the graphic organizer. You're gonna see the water table, or the water cycle. I'm sure you did it in grade nine or 10 science. This should not be new to you. Uh, it's a closed system. Uh, it has some definitions you need to know, good geographical terms. So you're gonna define those terms, and then you're going to write a paragraph describing um, the water cycle. I think I even give you the first sentence, which is uh, the energy from the sun and off you go. How does this cycle uh, happen? Uh, and then really importantly, it is a closed cycle. There is uh, no more fresh water being made on Earth. I mean, maybe not technically true. There is some desalination that takes place uh, in, in some countries. Israel, for example, does lots of desalinization. But for the most part, it's a closed system. Nature takes care of it. Uh, there's no more fresh water being, being created. So what does that mean in terms of some of the choices we make ecologically? Like when we pollute water, why in a closed system would that be particularly dangerous? Uh, so that, so that's your kind of first thing, writing a uh, couple definitions, describing the water cycle. Then there's also a little bit of research about uh, a hydrological issue. So I think the Saginaw, Saginaw floods are what we look at, but I mean, there's a million examples from drought in uh, California uh, that actually brought the reservoirs. The state of California actually dropped three inches because the reservoirs got so low. The Oglala Aquifer, which is the biggest underground aquifer on Earth of fresh water, which is being drained uh, for farming in the United States, it will soon run out. There are some really interesting kind of water-based uh, events going on. So choose one, make a little report on it. Uh, show me that you can, you know, find a current topic or a, a, a current event around that topic. That's really what I'm looking for. And then two is, uh, let's investigate a place that, um, it's a place that I've actually been to and I thought it, it's one of those beautiful places in the world. It's, uh, oh, you're gonna have an announcement here, I guess. Sorry. Please come to the office. Sorry. Sorry. Uh, so Cape Town, South Africa is a, a really modern city. It actually reminded me of Vancouver, if I had to be honest, what it looked like. It's got a really cool history. It's also a city of 4 million people that's about to run out of water. Uh, they have, it's called the 50 liter lifestyle. It was the thing that just shocked me when I got there. They encourage everybody that goes to, South, to Cape Town, everybody who lives there, to live on 50 liters a day. And, you know, coming from where I do, I'm on the top of Lake Superior here in Marathon, the largest freshwater lake by surface area in the world. It has, it's a smaller lake than Lake Bacall by volume, bigger by surface area. Uh, but it is, there's no end of freshwater where I live. I can go to any number of lakes, rivers, streams. We are rich in freshwater. So to even envision living on 50 liters a day uh, is stunning to me. So this is almost like a little journaling exercise. What would that look like for you? Uh, what would it do in terms of changing your life? You know, where are the places where maybe you could save water now or just use without thinking about it? Like it's a, 
a remarkable thing to think of a world in which you have to go to 50 liters a day and more and more places on earth are, are sort of facing that. So that's kind of the two activities due Wednesday. Uh, one is looking at that hydrological cycle, doing some definitions, uh, taking a graphic and turning it into text, which is the opposite of what we did before, uh, doing a little bit of research and then uh, a little thought uh, experiment about your use of water and thinking about kind of this South African uh, dilemma that they're in. So that's the work for the first half of the week. Uh, that should get you to Wednesday. I'll post something else. Uh, hope your weekend was good and uh, good luck working on this. All right, guys.